Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of the Simple Knit Podcast. My name is Eleanor. You can find me on Instagram as Simple Knit Co and here on YouTube where I hang out and share with you all of the things that I am currently knitting. If this is your first time checking out the podcast, welcome along. It's lovely to meet you and a big hello to all of my returning viewers. It's always great to spend some time with you chatting all things fibery. So pour yourself a drink. I just have a cup of tea in my very seasonal mug. And I have uh, quite a few knits to share with you today. Um, a few different things. So I think I might just might just jump right in. So my first finished object today I'm actually wearing. Uh, this is the Lorelei vest by Bronte Swanick and I will just hop up so you can see it a little bit better. Excuse me. Ooh. Particularly graceful there. Um, but this is the Lorelei vest. Um, I knit the fourth size of this pattern and it's just a little bulky weight vest. Um, I think this would be an amazing first garment pattern for any baby knitters in your life or if you're a slightly newer knitter or have never knit a garment before. All of the um, used, it's a top down vest so all of the increases are really kind of simple and don't because you're in a um, heavy weight yarn at on an eight millimeter needle there's not too many increases so it's goes by really quickly I actually knit this whole garment in five days which is kind of crazy for me I'm not usually that fast of or a knitter or I don't usually spend that much time knitting to knit a garment that quickly so yeah I definitely think this would be a great first garment pattern so um, for the yarn for this I actually held two yarns together to make the bulky weight um, I held together an 8 ply or DK weight black yarn with a fingering weight white yarn to create this really pretty mild fabric. Um, both of the yarns are from Bendigo Woolen Mills and it's in their luxury base, um, so the same base just at different weights. And I'm absolutely thrilled with how, with how it's turned out, I think it's really cute. Um, I'm, it's quite hot today, probably slightly too hot to be wearing wool, but it's still not itchy or anything, and I don't have anything underneath it, but I think it will be really cute with like a collared shirt underneath for work. It would be really cute with a skivvy underneath um, in winter, but and just a really great little, little layering piece. So I highly recommend, I think this pattern is really great. Um, as I said, it's just top down in the round with some one by one rib around the bottom, and then you just pick up and knit a little bit of ribbing around the neckband and armholes. I did make a little boo-boo when I picked up for the um, armholes and neckband. So um, on the well, on the ribbing at the bottom, I did a tubular cast off. So I did go down a needle size to do the tubular. And then um, I must have been, I think I was probably listening to a podcast or doing something else while I was knitting the neckband and armholes. And I didn't recall <laughs> didn't think that I had gone down a needle size so I did pick up and knit the neckband and armholes in a um, on a smaller needle um, so the 6.5 millimeter needle instead of the 8 that I knit the body on um, I realized as I was doing that I'd realized I'd done it as I was doing the tubular bind off on the second armhole so I'd done the neckband and the other armhole and I thought I'm not unpicking three tubular bind offs it's really not very noticeable especially because um, of the mild color it kind of bl all blends in and it wasn't too bad I just did a little bit of aggressive blocking on the armholes to make sure they were wide enough and they definitely are I don't have any problems so um, I was not going to bother unpicking all of that bind off just to do a couple of rows of ribbing um, but yeah, I'm absolutely stoked with it. I think it's really cute. Um, I really love the colour of it. And yeah, it's a really great pattern. So I highly, highly recommend the Lorelei Vest by Bronte Swanick. Um, I have a couple of other finished objects. I don't think I had... One of them I hadn't cast on. Um, and the other one is an old work in, project, work in progress that I pulled out. Um, so let's go this one first. So 
Um, I have heaps and heaps of yarn left over, so I used less than 400 meters of both of the um, the yarns that I held together for this for this garment. I have heaps of the because um, the Bendigo Woolen Mills yarns come in 200 gram skeins, so I have heaps. I think I have like seven. I have like 720 total meters, so I have like almost 400 meters of. Um, this white yarn left and I really don't know what to do with it because it's white <laughs> so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this um, but the black eight ply I had where is it I had this much left I bought two skeins because I wasn't quite sure how much I was going to use for the vest so I have this much left of the first skein that I used um, but then I had a second Full skein so because it is just a plain black yarn I thought I would make some hats so I've made one hat so this is um, you're not going to be able to see because it is black if I hold it up maybe and get it a bit overexposed you might see a little bit but yeah it's just a one by one ribbed hat so this pattern is my favorite hat pattern it is the Roku by Olga Berea Kefelian or Olga Jazzy Knits on Instagram it is my absolute favorite hat pattern it has a few sizes um, I think it's made to be worked up in like a 10 ply yarn but I've used everything from a 8 ply all the way up to like a bulky weight 12 ply yarn to make this hat and I just fiddle around with the um, needle size and which stitch count I use. Um, so this one I made for my uh, best mate who lives in Melbourne. Um, I made him a grey Roku um, last year, maybe the year before, I, a while ago I'd made that hat for him and he and his partner both wear it and love it so I figured I would make another one for them. Um, so that they have one for each of their heads. So I just used the black eight ply. I knit it in the largest size. Um, I did everything as per the pattern, used the recommended needle size. The only thing I do differently is um, I do a kitchener stitch across the top so there isn't a hole and then I just block it so it doesn't have this little pointy bit at the top. But the little pointy bit's kind of a bit of a design feature. So um, I do block it to be a little bit more round. Um, which I need to do with this but I knit this up in a matter of days it's just one by one ribbing and then some really nice neat decreases as I said because it's black you can't really see but um, I think I've said this on the podcast and I've talked about this hat pattern before I'm really kind of picky about the way the crown decreases are on hats and I really like the crown decreases on this hat so yeah that is a black ribbed hat I'm planning on casting on one of these in a smaller size for myself. I can get away with this hat, um, but like it's a bit loose on me. So because it's a ribbed hat, it's designed to stretch out a little bit and I could wear this one, but um, for my own, ooh, for my own personal preference, I'll probably, I'll probably knit the smallest size so it's a bit more fitted on my head. But um, yeah, that is a little Roku hat. So my other finished object for this episode is a pair of socks. So I looked back and I cast on these socks in September last year and I got to, I think I did the heel on the first sock and then put them down and just wasn't really feeling much like sock knitting. I had a couple of other stockinette projects that I could carry around with me. So that's usually when I do most of my plain, um, stockinette sock knitting is um, when I'm out and about so I just carry it around in my handbag and I had you know some stockinette garments some other things that I was carrying around with me so I just wasn't wasn't knitting on these and I finished my vest finished my hat and this was the only thing I had on the needles and I truly didn't really feel like casting anything new on so I figured I would finish these socks and I finished them so quickly so I think I I was, you know, I was just past the heel on the first sock. I whizzed down in maybe like one afternoon evening and then knit the second sock in like maybe a week. Um, it's 
kind of, yeah, I just, I don't know where I found the time to knit an entire sock and a bit in not much more than a week, but I was just, I guess, really motivated. And I think I was, part of the motivation is the um, self-striping yarn is pretty fun anyway, but I just am absolutely in love with this colorway. So this is a um, merino nylon blend yarn from Nomadic Yarns, and the colorway is called Knit Folk. And I just really, really love, I love the colors. Um, my favorite is probably this scummy green. Um, and it actually worked out really well. I did a fish lips kiss heels, so, and the heel perfectly took up four stripes. So the fifth color, you just end, I just ended up with this um, really thick green stripe in the middle, um, which was completely unintentional. It just is how it happened with my gauge um, on these socks, but I don't really bother with color managing or doing a contrasting heel on my self striping socks. I just knit from the cuff down and just go for it. Um, so I did what I usually do for stockinette socks. I cast on 64 stitches. Um, I did two by two rib at the cuff and I just did five stripes, which was close to 20 rows. I usually do close to 20 rounds. Um, on a, um, two millimeter needle. Um, then I switched to my two millimeter um, nine inch circular to knit the leg of the sock in the round. As I said, I did a fish lips kiss heel. I do switch to a um, long magic loop needle to do the ribbing, the heel and the toe decreases. And I just did simple um, wedged toe decreases, one stitch from the end of the rows. I find that works well with my foot shape. Um, and yeah, I, don't have much else to say other than I don't know how I knit these socks so quickly. Um, other than I was just so in love with the colorway and just loved seeing all these colors come together. So really excited and kind of amazed at myself for that. So that is a finished pair of socks, which is my first finished pair of socks in a uh, very long time. Um, so I will talk, I did a couple of um, different things this fortnight as well, because I wasn't really in the mood to cast on anything new. Um, so I did a little bit of repairing. So um, at the last place, before I moved, I had a bit of an um, insect problem so a couple of my jumpers did have some little holes in them so I finally just pulled my finger out and fixed them up so the first one was my Weekender by Andrea Mowry I kind of look like a whole bunch of television static because this is also in a um the body is in a mild black and white yarn um I knit this did I have a podcast no, I didn't. I didn't I knit this before I started podcasting, but I believe I've spoken about it before. Um, it's in 100% alpaca yarn. So that meant that the little hole I had got quite unfurly quite quickly. Um, and it was also right in the center. So I'm just grabbing it up. It is quite hard to see because it is in the mild section of the jumper. And this is in reverse stockinette, so you can't even really see where the little patch is. Um, the only thing is, because you have this slit stitch detail down the center, I did have to kind of finagle one of those slip stitches because it did have um, a bit of an end. So I just kind of pulled that and sewed it down and then did a little patch over the hole. Um, a link below, I just used uh, the very pink knits patching your knits video to um, do these repairs and yeah on this jumper it was right front and center well not front and center but like right over my stomach so it was kind of a very visible spot but now that it's done because it, the um, it's the reverse stockinette side it's alpaca so it's super fuzzy and it is um, a mild yarn you really you really can't see it and I had enough of the original yarn left over that I was able to use the same 
the same yarn. So I'm really thrilled with how that little repair went. Um, the second one was slightly more disheartening. So I made the Klein sweater last year in this amazing hot pink yarn. And then I got a hole, you can see it there, right like front and center. There was no, no kind of neatly fixing that in an invisible way. So I kind of put off, I just, you know, secured the, um, loose stitches and kind of put off fixing it up because it was, um, yeah, just a little bit disheartening. I didn't get, I wore this a little bit at the end of last winter. I didn't even block it before I wore it, I will say. And post repair, I've done a proper block. It's still a tiny bit damp, but I actually properly blocked it. It fits so much better now that I've actually properly, um, washed and laid out the yarn. Um, yeah, like, laid it flat and let it dry like the sleeves are the right length um it just fits a thousand times better um because i mean i could have just i don't know it's seamed sweater as well and the thought of trying to maybe rip back to where the hole was and re-knitting was just not appealing to me um at all uh, so i just figured i would i just own it like it's a giant hot pink sweater. I don't think anyone's going to be, and I think that the brightness of the color does kind of bring a little bit of, detract a little bit from the patch because it is so bright. Um, but also it's a wool garment. These things happen and the patch is there. So I can, I did work out if I do feel particularly self-conscious and I'm wearing a coat, I can wear it backwards. Um, but I don't think I will. I mean, yes, I, I think I patched it kind of as neatly as I possibly could, but it's always going to look different and I mean, it is what it is. And I'm just happy that the sweater is functional again. Um, I should have blocked it in the first place. It fits so much better. It's still a tiny bit damp, so I will just lay it out again um, when I finish filming for it to just completely dry. But it fits about 10,000 times better now that it's blocked. I probably should have blocked all the pieces before I seamed them, but you live and you learn. So that is my freshly repaired Klein jumper. Um, and I did enter these. Um, Tommy from Moonstone Makes. She's Dynamite Trujillo on Instagram. She is running a little make-along that's the finish it, fix it, or frog it make-along. So I have entered these in that um, make-along. And if you're looking for some inspiration for either ripping out projects that don't work for you, for repairing things that aren't functional anymore, or just finishing long-term works in progress and a lot of really cool inspiring posts on that hashtag as well so I highly recommend um, checking that out so I do have a couple of other things I'm a little bit all over the place today because usually I just have things that I have finished making and things that I am in the process of making maybe things that I'm imminently about to make excuse me so but this week I obviously had some little fix up jobs and I also have a little bit of a knitting fail. So I cast on this mitten last year. So can't even think of how to tell this story in anything resembling sensible order. Emily Green is a designer that I really like. Um, she knits kind of very um, structured, cool geometric patterns. Um, she's done quite a few patterns for like Brooklyn Tweed and things like that and they're always really cool using like cables and slip stitches. I love all of her patterns. Um, she has this pattern called the anti Klein Mitts pattern. This is a semi-completed one so it's all in twisted rib with this really fun um, just like twisted stitch detail to create this like multi-directional twisted rib. Um, I had ever since she released this pattern I've been eyeing it off I just think it's really cool really beautiful really wanted to knit it um, I kind of don't live in a mitteny climate but thought I have friends who do live in mitteny climates I'll just make a pair for one of them um, this yarn I bought when I was on holidays a couple of years ago in Ireland it is a sport weight 100% Irish wool and 
I just thought that the colour worked really well with this pattern. And I was like, oh, it's a fingering weight pattern. This is a sport weight yarn, but we're knitting at a pretty tight gauge. Anyway, I think I can get away with it. Um, Rita, you, I could not get away with it. Um, <laughs> it's This is weight. I knit the smallest size. I figured, oh, I knit the smallest size. And even if the gauge is a little bit bigger, um, then it would just end up as the largest size. So, um, uh, it did not. It has, oh, that's right. This is the left mitten, I think, but I'm kind of at an awkward spot. I'm just going to try it on for you so you can see. Um, I decided when I was making it, I would just go to where you separate for the thumb and see how much too big it is. Firstly, look how far down my arm it goes. It's supposed to be go down to like here. And there's another 20 or so rows of the pattern before you do the um, ribbed bit at the top, which means it would be about this tall before you even start doing the little um, top cuff. So basically, it's way too big. Um, my friend that I was thinking of making this for, her hands are a little bit bigger than mine, but not that much. And when I checked, it's mainly the row gauge that is the problem. Um, my row gauge is just way too big. Um, this yarn, it's really lovely, but it is very um, kind of like stiff and inelastic to work with. Um, I think there's quite a bit of spinning grease still in it. Um, it really does soften up a lot when you block it but it is quite stiff to work with. So yeah, when I was making this, I had a feeling they would be too big. I didn't think they would be as much too big as they are. So I really love the pattern though. I do want to, and it's really fun to work on. Um, so I do want to actually make these mittens properly in a fingering weight yarn, but um, I'm just going to sadly stare at this for a while before I unfurl it also. If you have any idea of what to do with about 300 meters of a very woolly sport weight yarn, uh, let me know because this is such a beautiful yarn in such a beautiful color. I could just make like a hat or something, but I feel like I'd like to do something a little bit, I don't know. I will probably just end up making it into a hat because I'm not, it's kind of not quite enough for and it's not really, it's not a good sock yarn. I don't know. That's a bit of a fail. So I did start working on these like a year ago. Um, and then I put them down. I don't know why. I think I just was a bit bored. And I just picked them up because, as I said before, I didn't really want to cast on anything new and figured I would try to get these finished. Um... But I also think the reason I did put them down was because I knew that they were just going to be too big. So yeah, bit of a tale of woe, but it's a really beautiful pattern. If you're looking for a really cool um, mitten pattern, um, they're fingerless mittens, um, highly recommend this one. I think it's really, really really fun this um, structure and texture is really lovely and now I just have to find the right yarn to actually knit it in for realsies um, yeah so that is everything that I was working on I have a couple of new cast ons yeah I'll share them with you basically these socks have just like relit the sock knitting fire in me and I have a couple of um, quantities of yarn that I to make some more garments with I thought about cast and I know what patterns I want to make with those but I just wasn't really feeling um in the mood to knit a garment um I will cast on another one of these hats for myself um but I just kind of was in the mood to knit some socks so I've cast on two more socks um two separate pairs of socks um, these are both patterns that I've knit before um, and they're both with Retrosaria Mondim sock yarn which is a 100% Peruvian, no, um, Portuguese wool sock yarn. Uh, the first one I've just done a tiny tiny bit of. Um, it's just a little cuff so oh, and it's in this really dark navy colour 
so it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to see. But this pattern is the Midnight Dancer Sock by Sari Nordland. Um, so they're just a stockinette sock with this really cute little um, ruffle around the hem. I have made a pair of these before in a very pale yarn, um, but I think these will be really cute um, sticking out of the top of boots in the winter. So I have a couple of skeins of plain colored like um solid colored sock yarn that um i think would be really cute for boot socks and this little frill around the top i don't know if i'm having like a second childhood i'm not quite old enough for that i don't think um but i think these like ruffled socks would be really cute coming out the top of a pair of boots um i'm knitting the middle size so the one that gives you 64 stitches and I did go down to a two millimeter needle just because I want the gauge to be nice and tight if I'm wearing them with boots. And I know that that's a sock gauge that works for me. I am going to, there are two different heel options in this pattern as well. Um, there's an option for a short row heel or a heel flap and gusset. I'm going to do the heel flap and gusset because I am planning on wearing these with boots. Um, yeah, I just kind of cast on the ruffle. I knit the ruffle on a um, long circular needle like um, in magic loop and then um, once I got down into my final stitch count I transferred onto my little nine inch circular two millimeter needle so I can have this as my on the go sock project. Um, and so it's not really anything to show at the moment but that'll just be my on the go knitting. Um, yeah, and that hopefully will be really cute coming out the top of a pair of boots. Oh, very hard to show. Um, but that is the first sock that I cast on. Um, the second one I've made a bit more progress on because this is kind of my at home knitting project. Um, and I've gotten to the heel flap of this sock. So this is also a Retrosaria Mondeme yarn, but this is a, it kind of reminds me of Cookies and Cream. It's like this cream colored base with these um, dark brown speckles all through it. So it just makes the prettiest color. And I've knit a pair of textured socks out of these. Um, I have knit this pattern before, but it was a couple of years ago now. Um, I knit the this is the Easy Feet Sock Pattern by Jess of the Sweater Collective. Um, and I am just kind of using the stitch pattern from this sock. And then I'm knitting them the same way that I knit my last pair using this pattern, which is not really like the pattern at all. So once again, Jess gives you two different heel options, either a short row or a heel flap and gusset. But this pattern is written as a toe up sock pattern. Um, I don't like doing toe up socks. I prefer cuff down. I've never done a gusset, like a heel flap and gusset, like with gusset increases in a toe up sock. I'm sure you can do that, but I just like to do it cuff down. Um, and I do a two by two rib around the cuff instead of a one by one rib. So I think I did about 15 rows of two by two rib. I then did about, I did about, no, I did exactly 20 pattern repeats on the leg and now I have started an eye of partridge heel as per the pattern and then I will do however many pattern repeats down the foot that I did last time um, for this pattern because the last pair I made fit me really well. So yeah, I've knit the leg of this sock this weekend. Once again, I don't know where I'm getting this knitting, speedy knitting mojo from. Um, but yeah, I knit the leg of the sock this weekend. I've just started on the heel flap and then I'll do the foot and cast on the second one. So if you have any sock patterns that you particularly like, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I don't really like cabled socks or colour work socks. So any kind of textured pattern though I do quite enjoy or just a plain a plain vanilla sock. Um, I don't know where I was going with that sentence. 
So that is everything that I have been working on recently. Feel free to leave a comment down below and let me know what you're working on. I'm feeling very virtuous and productive at the moment. Um, but that being said, I'm not really doing much else other than knitting in my um, downtime. So hit me up in the comments below. Let me know how you're going and what you're working on. I would love to hear from you. Um, it's always great to have to um, hear from people in the comments. So I hope you're all keeping safe and well. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye.